here we have our first problem. Use the given confidence interval limits to find the point estimate p hat and the margin of error capital E. Here we have two values, 0 0.764, 0 0.788. I want you to calculate P here and E here. Now, this couldn't possibly any, this couldn't possibly be any more simple. Your P hat is your upper plus lower limit. Just add the bigger number to the smaller number, divide by two, there's your answer. Your margin of error is going to be the same thing, only you're going to minus your bigger number from your smaller number, divide by two. Here are the values they gave us and your values here. You actually end up getting three decimal places anyway, so just plug that in here and you're good to go. Moving on. Here we have our second problem. Assume that a random sample is used to estimate a population portion P. Find the margin of error P that corresponds to the given statistics and confidence level. So here they've given us a confidence level of 95%. They've given us a sample size of 2,115, of which 20% are successes. Now this can also be done in just several seconds using StatDisk. Just pull that up. We're going to go to Analysis, Confidence Intervals, Proportion, One Sample. It's going to bring up this window. You've got your confidence level, of course, at 0.95, your sample size of 2,115, and your number of successes is 423. Now this number comes from taking 20% of 2,115. So just take this sample size and multiply it by 0 0.2. You're gonna get 0.423. I'm sorry, just for 423. Stick that in there. You're gonna click Evaluate. Notice it gives you your margin of error, which is what we're looking for, but it also gives you your confidence interval, which will come in handy for other problems. We want four decimal places, so just count over one, two, three, four. That's a four, so you don't round anything. And there's your answer. Moving on. Our third problem. Use the given data to find the minimum sample size required to estimate a population proportion or percentage. Now it's asking to estimate a population proportion. So we want a, we are given a margin of error of six percentage points, confidence level of 95%, and a p hat of 42%. So we're going to come down here to stat disk and we're going to go to analysis. We want a sample size determination and as it says in the problem, we want to estimate a proportion. We're given a confidence level of 95%, so we can leave that as the default. We have a margin of error of six percentage points, so we're gonna do 0.06, because that's how that is. And the decimal equivalent of 42% is 0.42. We're going to hit evaluate. And bomb, there you go. Required sample size is 260. Plug that in and moving on to question four. And here we have our fourth example. Calculate the margin of error if the necessary requirements are satisfied. The confidence level is 99%, sample size n equals 104, and deviation of 17. This Greek symbol here is standard deviation whether you're dealing with a sample or a population. <coughs> And when you see this formula here, that's going to show that it's a population. Now some people will have you calculate this by hand, but forget that noise, we've got stat disk. You're going to come here to analysis, going to go to confidence level, and we're going to go to mean one sample. That will bring up this window. We have a confidence level of 99%, our sample size is 104, and our standard deviation is 17. Now be very careful that you put it in the population standard deviation, not the sample standard deviation. It will give you the wrong answer. So you're going to click evaluate, and here is your margin of error. It asks for three decimal places, so you're just going to go to three, and since that's an eight, it's 4.294. Now as for the requirements, if n is over 30, pretty much it's good to go, so you're just gonna hit yes there. And moving on to number five. In this problem, we are asked to give the minimum sample size required to estimate an unknown population mean. We're given a margin of error, a confidence level, and a population standard deviation. Now, this is also quite simple in StatDisk. We're going to come up here to Analysis, go down to Sample Size Determination, and you're going to click Estimate Mean. That will bring up this window. So you're going to throw in your confidence level is 0.90, your margin of error is 0.07, and your standard deviation of 2.7. Pretty self-explanatory. 
we don't know the population size, which is pretty much what we are evaluating. I'm gonna hit evaluate, and there you have it. Required sample size is 41. Plug that in and move on to question six. In this problem, we are solving for a confidence interval. A study of the ages of motorcyclists killed in crashes involves the random selection of 134 drivers with a mean of 38.38 years. Assume that your standard deviation is 11.8 years. Construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval estimate of the mean age of all motorcycles killed in crashes. Now this also is quite simple in StatDisk. To get your confidence interval for this, we're going to come up to analysis, of course confidence intervals, and we're going to go to the mean of one sample. That will bring up this window. You're going to plug in all your values. And now you want to make sure, again, that you're in sample standard deviation, not population standard deviation, because we're talking about a very specific sample of people here. I'm going to evaluate, and you're given your confidence interval of 90%. Just be very careful of rounding. It's asking for two decimal places in this one. So as you can see, I rounded here, and we can move on to question number seven. In this problem, we are dealing with a genetic experiment with peas, resulted in one sample of offspring that consisted of 415 green peas and 160 yellow peas. We're going to construct a confidence interval of 95%, showing the estimated of percentage of yellow peas. We're going to come to our stat disk here, analysis, confidence interval, and proportion of one sample since we're dealing with one sample of offspring. Now it's asking to construct the percentage of yellow peas, and since we had 160 yellow peas, that's going to be our number of successes. Our sample size, you're going to add the number of green peas to the number of yellow peas. Pretty simple. And our confidence level is 95%. Hit evaluate, and there you go. It's not asking for a margin of error, so we don't really need that, but our confidence interval is here. Just be careful of rounding to your third place as it asks for. There's a little section here as well. Given that percentage is not 25%, do the results contradict expectation? Now, 25% would be between 24% and 31%, so no, it's a true percentage, and this is pretty close. Here we go with number eight. This problem, do one of the following that's appropriate. Find the critical Z value, find the critical T value, or state that neither the normal T or Z apply. Confidence level is 95%, N is 17, standard deviation is known, and the population is very skewed. N is less than 30, you can't use either, and that's all you need to know. All right, use the given confidence level and sample data to find the margin of error and the confidence interval for the population mean. Assume the population has a normal distribution. We're given a confidence level a sample size, an X bar, and an S. So to do this, we're going to come to our stat disk, analysis, confidence interval, and mean of one sample. We're going to bring up this window, and we're just going to plug in our values. We have 98% confidence level. Our sample size is 51. Our sample mean is 4.0, that's your X bar. And our sample standard deviation is your S, that's 5.8. Now you want to put this in your sample, not your population standard deviation because you have your sample data, not your population data. So we're evaluating and there you have it. Your population mean is 2.0 to 6.0. Since it's 5.95, you're going to round up and that becomes a 10. So that becomes six kilograms. Your margin of error, same deal, 1.9 because it wants one decimal. That's a five, so that becomes a 10 makes the whole thing two kilograms. Just want to be careful with your rounding. My math lab is pretty picky and we can move on to number 10. And finally, number 10, use the given confidence level and sample data to find a confidence interval for the population standard deviation. Assume that a simple random sample has been selected from a population with a normal distribution. Problem is salaries of college professors who took a statistics course in college. We have a 95, a 90% 90 confidence level. We have a sample of 51, an X bar of 62,400, and a sample standard deviation of 19,629. 
we're going to come to our stat disk, analysis, confidence interval, and standard deviation of one sample. Bring up your window. The X bar is pretty much irrelevant at this point. That's for those folks who do things by hand, but who does that anymore? We're going to plug in your values, 90% confidence, your sample size, and your sample standard deviation, which is right here. Evaluate, and you have your confidence levels. We're going to use this one up here. We're not worried about variance, that's for another chapter. So we have the 16,893. You can ignore those cents. And 23,541, because we have over 50 cents on that one. Now that concludes this tutorial. You may or may not have similar questions in this exact order, but you should have similar questions enough to be able to just kind of watch this and get an idea on how to use that disc to finish the rest of your problems. Thank you for watching, rate, comment, subscribe.